A question to the Treasurer. The average Australian family contributes around $20,000 a year to superannuation. A large percentage of Australians will be dead before they're eligible to use the money, Treasurer. Will the government allow Australians the right to access part of their super to buy a home or to support their family in difficult times? What's the point of slaving for 50 years to never enjoy the benefits of your own hard work? The Treasurer has the call. Members on my right, the member for Deakin will cease interjecting. The Treasurer has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the member for his question, and I'm sure he's equally concerned about those who are mm -hmm. uh, at the Queensland Nickel plant, uh, where he's had some involvement in, in recent times, and I'm sure he must be very concerned about their entitlements and, and their future. I know that I know that our member is. Uh, I think I know our member for Herbert is very concerned about those Queensland nickel workers, and I want to commend the member for Herbert for his outstanding work on their behalf. And uh, I, I commend those on this side of the House, particularly the Minister for Employment, who has committed some $2.5 million to support the transition for those workers who will be affected uh, by that plant, uh, which the member has had some considerable involvement with. But the member asked me about issues of superannuation, and this government has been engaged in a process of ensuring that we have a retirement income system that is fit for purpose <coughs> for the 21st century. In last year's budget, Mr. Speaker, in last year's budget, what we did is we changed arrangements around the pension to make sure it was fit for purpose that would ensure that those uh, who are on a pension, who are on low assets, would actually get more support, and those who are in a better position to support themselves with higher assets would no longer be become dependent on a part pension. Now, Mr. Speaker, when the Prime Minister took up office, um, he put the second phase of retirement incomes review really on that agenda, and the government has been working through the issues around superannuation. Now, the Assistant Treasurer uh, last week outlined, in response to the Murray review, that our superannuation system has to be fit for the purpose of ensuring that people are not dependent on a pension or a part pension as much as possible. And how you frame your changes to superannuation are about that purpose. About that purpose. Now, those opposite have a plan to tax superannuation for no other reason than to raise revenue to chase high levels of spending, Mr Speaker. That's their plan on superannuation, just to tax it. There's, there's no plan in there to make superannuation better. There's no plan in there to make superannuation more flexible or to offer more choice. In fact, those opposite oppose choice in superannuation, Mr Speaker. Those opposite oppose uh, someone in their own employment in cases choosing their own fund into which their superation will go, Mr Speaker. Those opposite oppose the idea of having better governance of superannuation funds, Mr Speaker, and they oppose it. This side of the House is focused on delivering superannuation changes that are fairer, that are more flexible, that offer more choice, Mr Speaker. And that's what the government is working on. And we will continue to do that up to the budget, Mr Speaker, and we will make those announcements at the appropriate time. But superannuation is there to support those Australians, the incentives that are provided to ensure that those who are at risk of being on a welfare payment, on a pension or on a part pension in their retirement, can avoid being in that position. And that's what the government's measures will be designed to do.